Good evening, everyone. Let's stand in heart word of prayer. O oh Lord, O oh God, O oh excellent is your name. We give you thanks for journey mercies. We give you thanks to, for the privilege of being within your presence, lifting up holy hands. As we gather here this night, we ask for a special touch from your hand upon each and every one that made it possible to be here. Those who are on online, those who are in their car, wherever they are tonight, listen to your word. Grant your man servant power from on high. Speak through him as you have never speak before. Let Pentecost be seen, be felt, be heard this night as we pray and tell you thanks in Jesus' precious name. Let all God's people say, Amen. What a mighty God we serve. I don't hear the church. God is good. All the time. God is good. He's excellent. Dios es bueno todo el tiempo. Indeed, we have come out tonight to lift up the name of Jesus. And tonight I want to greet you in the matchless name of Jesus. And to say in the same breath, welcome. Welcome to the foot. Prince of Hope evangelistic series. Uh, may God bless your heart tonight as you come to worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, so let's go to Silo. Silo, are you here? If you are here, say amen. No, sir. Uh, let, let's start from the other side. <laughs> Santa Cruz, are you here? Say, thank you, Jesus. I hear you had dinner this evening. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, how about Goshen? Goshen, are you here? Say, hallelujah. hallelujah. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Mother T, Mother T, are you here? If you are here, say, God bless me. All right. I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm checking. Lakovia, if you're in the house, I want you to say, Amen. I hear you, I hear you. Silo, are you ready? Tonight we welcome you wholeheartedly. Those who are in-house and those who are online, we welcome you tonight. May God richly bless you. And remember, as you come tomorrow night, bring a friend and bring your Bible. May God bless you and welcome. God bless. Thank you.
with my soul. This glorious thought, my sins not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross. the Lord, it is well with my soul. We're asking the driver of a silver Mazda pickup, 23, registration CR 2372, please get to your vehicle now. You may not be able to get home tonight. The time has come for all of us to participate in tonight's program as we share that which God has blessed us with in furthering his kingdom here on earth. And so I ask that as you give your offering, you will pray that God will bless it to the extent that many souls will be drawn to his eternal kingdom. Let us pray as we, the ushers prepare to lift the night's offering. Loving God and our Father who art in heaven, we thank you for your blessings and for the gift of life. And as we come to preach the good news of salvation, we recognize that it requires means to do so bless your people now as they give to your cause, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Within the hearts has always known that there is freedom somehow breathed into the very soul of light the prisoner the powerless the slave have always known it there's something that keeps reaching for the sky and even life 
begins because a baby fights for freedom and songs we love to sing have freedom still. Some have walked through fire and flood to find the place of freedom. And some face hell itself for freedom's dream. Let freedom ring wherever minds the one it means to be in chains. Let freedom ring wherever. Sons have no key, you can be free and you can sing. Let freedom ring. God built freedom into every fiber of creation and he meant for us to all be free and
Good night, everyone. God has been good to us. What do you say? It is now time for us to hear a word from heaven. And God's manservant is ready to deliver God's message to us tonight. He is no stranger to us. He has been preaching God's message in this mess age. And tonight, it is my privilege to introduce the president of West Jamaica Conference, our evangelist, Pastor Glenn O. Samuels, as he will speak to us tonight. Just before she co he comes, just before he comes, Stacy and Nesbeth will do for us the song of meditation. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. His heart was broken, mine was mended. He became sin, now I am clean. The cross he carried for my burdens, the nails that held him set me free. His life for mine, his life for mine, how could it ever be that he would die, God's son would die, to save His scars of suffering brought me healing. He spilled his blood to fill my soul. His crown of horns made me royalty. His song
morning, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Has God been good to you today? Can I hear you say praise the Lord? If you know that he gave his life that you may live, can I hear you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Now, it is my joy to welcome you to this place. And I apologize to you for our later than desired start. We have some issues, but we're getting there. We're getting there. The devil is fighting a losing battle, but we praise the name of the Lord our God. And so I, again, I'm going to have to cut through some of the stuff I wanted to do because I want to send you home before the sun comes up in the morning. I don't think I have enough blanket to cover all of you, nor do I have enough dumplings for breakfast for all of you. So I need to get it over and done and want to get you out. Now, I, I noticed that, you know, w when I was at primary school, there were, a certain there were certain children who didn't like to sit at the front. What do we call them? It's not me says so, it's you says so. Is you say so. So, so, so I'm looking, I'm looking, and uh, last evening I wondered why is it that there were some folk, and there are still some folks standing up on the outside, and we do have some, you know, these chairs are the newest ones we have. They were imported, it's the first time they are being used, you know. And I wondered why you would prefer to stand up when we do have a few seats down here. The back is so crowded, I can hardly see your face way down the back. Usually, I normally put the pulpit at the sideways so I could see you closer, but uh, we change this time, and um, you're so far away. But, but I'll let you be, but you're going to regret. By the way, there'll be no meeting tomorrow night. I'm, so I'm going to ask you to do something for me. Too. Could I see the hands of all the married folk tonight? Could you raise your hand? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Put, put your hands down, put your hands down. Could I see the hands? Of all the people who are married, and you're sure the one you're married to is yours. Now keep it up, keep it up. Some hands are going down too quickly as if you're not sure. Somebody seemed to be double thinking now. Uh, is, is, is he really mine? Is she really mine? Now, 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 if you're sure that you're sure, keep the hand up. All right, okay, okay. Wonderful. What? Now, 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 I see two ladies sitting beside each other, and both hands are up. I don't want to misinterpret, nor do I want to, 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 to draw the wrong conclusion. So, so I'm coming right. I need to, in, I have an inquisitive mind. I, I, I just need to investigate. So, so these two hands went up, and, and they're sitting beside each other. So I come to make sure that there's no pants down here. Now, let me ask you a question. Where's your husband? He's at home, not here. Where's your husband? He's at home, not here. No, no, there's trouble in the camera. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand what's happening here. So, 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 so. Oh, your husband is sick. Yes. What happened to your husband? He's sick too. No, no, here. <laughs> no, no. No, how come the two of you married a two sick husband? <laughs> the flu. He wasn't sick all the time. Now, no, I have a problem, congregation. Because the two of them healthy and the two men sick. Now, I want to, to talk to the husbands. You bring them here on Tuesday evening. Me want to ask them, why is it that you are both healthy and them sick? Because me know that sick husband can't manage the job, you know. It is good to see you and I trust that you all had a good day. And uh, So, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to make sure that, that, that I... I mark some seats down front so, so that you can never tell where the gifts will come from. So, so where's your husband? Don't have any. You don't have any? <laughs> now, if you keep coming, I'm going to find one for you. Just keep on coming, huh? No, you're too young to have any, so I wouldn't ask you any questions. <laughs> All righty, good to see you. Good to see. So where your hand up, sir? Where's your wife? Where's your husband? I'm not troubling my husband. <laughs> she said her husband is around. The last, time I th the last time I saw him, he was straight. Now he's around, huh? <laughs> it is a joy having you here tonight, and I, I trust that you've had a wonderful day. Uh, where's your husband? 
You're not married? So how do you make him so fool fool? <laughs> now, 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 somebody said to me that, that when they look at what some husbands are doing to some wives, before they allow any man to boof boof them, they hug up mango tree and go back to God the same way they come down here. Is that what you're thinking? Bless the Lord. She said yes. She said yes. She said, All righty. Shall we? Where's my praise team? It's time to stand. Before I get myself in trouble, let's stand as we sing our theme song. Now, you don't have any husband, so don't even raise your hand. You shouldn't have a husband. Are we ready for our, our song of praise? I love you, Lord, because your mercy never fails. Is there anybody here who loved the Lord? All right. Has, been, has he been merciful to you? Let the church say amen. We shall sing our song, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails. All of our lives, he's been faithful. Great indeed is his faithfulness. I love you, Lord. Yes, for your mercy. For your mercy never fails me. All of our lives. All my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up. From the moment that I wake Don't you know you every morning is his love Till I lay my head And we want to testify oh, Of the goodness Of the goodness Of God Of God Cause all my life he's been faithful All my life you have been faithful All of my life he's been so good That I am able. Every breath that I am made. I just want to testify of the goodness oh, of God. I will sing of the goodness. Of the goodness yes. of God. I love your voice. What a wonderful Savior. You have led me through the fire and in darkest night. He's been closer. You are close. Even than a brother, do you know him as a father? I've known you as a father. Do you know him as a friend? I've known you as a friend. Do you know that you're living in the goodness of God? Yes, in the goodness of God. And oh, we sing the song tonight. Oh, my life. Yes, he has been. Yes, he is. Oh, so good. so good With every breath that I am able every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness oh, of God I will sing of the goodness of God All my life, all my life All my life Oh, lift you your heart and sing it, somebody for. Yes, he has been Oh, so good. so good, with every breath that I am able, every breath that I am made, I will sing of the oh, goodness of God, of the goodness we lift our hearts, oh Lord our God, we come again this evening thanking you for saving grace, we, we bless your name that you woke us up this morning. We give you thanks and praise that even though the day may have been a rough day for somebody, yet, God, we are alive all because of your goodness. We pray now as we open your word that you would send the Holy Ghost to be our teacher. That you would sit down beside us. You would open our minds to understand. For we can't understand your word unless your Holy Spirit Give us a clear understanding. We pause now to pray even for those who are caught in the valley in the shadow of grief. Whose loved ones have been taken away. We lift up to you God. Those who are here. Soaring over the loss of their loved ones. We present to you those of our family members abroad. Dealing with the grief of a husband, a father and grandfather. Hasten the day when death itself shall die. 
God, before we come down to kiss a dying pillow, may we make our calling and election sure. There's someone in the night who's hearing your voice who need to make a decision because the devil, like a roaring lion, seeks whom he may devour. And so we pray, God, for the blessing on everyone tonight. For those inside the tent, for those on the outside, for those listening in their homes, for those online. May the day come soon when we shall see you face to face and hear you saying to us, Welcome home, children, when death and sorrow and hunger and trial shall be no more. This is our asking as we wait on you tonight. In Jesus' name, and let God's children say, Amen. Now you're going to have to listen fast tonight because I'm going to be running fast. But I want to share with you that we will not have any meetings tomorrow night. And so I'm going to ask all of the married folk, this is what I was going to do when I started teasing you. I'm going to ask you to, to preach tomorrow night. And then when you come on Tuesday night, you'll tell me what the topic of your sermon was. I may have to quiz you, but uh, uh, so, so tomorrow night, I'm going to send you home to be undercover lovers. Are you listening to me? And then we'll be back. But, but hey, take care of the men, them sick. So take, 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 take care of them, all right? Uh, okay, so we're going to be here tomorrow. Uh, we will not be here tomorrow evening. That's our off night. But we'll be back bright and early and chirpy on Tuesday evening. Now, I assure you, if, if you work uh, in Santa Cruz and uh, you live in Balaclava and Magati and Thornton and Silo and you're in any of those parts. Uh, if you want to come straight here from work, if you don't drive, uh, as long as it's a bus coming, I know, I, well, I'll ask the transportation folk, I know that there are buses running from a number of these areas. So here's what's on my heart. I'm going to make sure that for the first 100 visitors who would have come straight here from work, I'll have 100 fried dumplings and... You know what they call fritters? Anybody here love fritters? Only these hands alone? I go make sure only you... Got. So, so, so how about some... So I want to make sure that, that, that if you want to come straight by here, because we are, we are aiming at starting uh, Minister Seven. I hate when we get to this time and sending you home late. I think by now we have fixed our electrical problems and the other issues, so I trust that we can uh, be on here early. And then there's so much I need to talk to you about. We'll have some doctors here. We'll have some nurses here as we have, you know, we want you to be healthy, happy, and holy. But our time is gone, and so I'll tell you more about that on Tuesday evening. Uh, I, on my way here, I spoke with my wife's aunt uh, who lost her husband. They live in South Florida in the West Palm area. I had the privilege of going by to visit with them November of last year. You know, uh, your loved ones may be sick for a while, but when... When the final, final moment comes and they take the last breath, it's still difficult to handle. And so to Aunt Vad and Aunt Neil and Carlisle and all of the rest of the family, on behalf of the Ali clan from this side of the ocean, we extend to you the family's prayer and heartfelt sorrow at the passing of husband, father, and grandfather. May the day come soon. And also to, to Heather and uh, the middle sex group. You know, today there were so many funeral services at Santa Cruz, at the La Cova district, and some pastors have two funerals. It's going to be a wonderful day when there'll be no more funeral services. <laughs> And, 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 and the tent is here because many times we, we drift on in life, busy doing everything else except the one thing that is most meaningful, and that is preparing ourselves and others for the coming of the Lord. Uh, not just for the coming of the Lord, but for the day when you'll draw your last breath. And that could be tomorrow, don't you know that? 
I don't seek to frighten you, but you don't even have to get sick to die. Do you know that? You don't have to trouble anybody for them to pull a gun and you're dead. I want you to know that God's desire is that you'd make your calling and election sure. And I, I, I walked down there, and I, I, my mother taught me better. Uh, Brother, personal ministers director, it is my joy to welcome you to the place tonight. Uh, we have our PM director. I don't know if you saw his face earlier, but, but handsome folk like to hide their handsome features. Huh? If an ugly man like me can show my ugly face, he ought to show his handsome face. I'm going to ask the PM director, the personal ministers director for West Jamaica to stand. He's sitting right out there. All righty, good to have you, good to have you. I, I learned a song, I wish I could sing. Keith thinks he can sing. I, I learned a song some time ago uh, uh, that has a line running through it. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds. I think the first line says, in times like these, huh, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. But the songwriter keeps emphasizing the need for certainty, the need to be sure, the need. And so the word of God says you, that you and I, we ought to make our calling and election sure. Are you listening to me? And the Bible, the Bible declares that we who believe in God, we who take the Bible seriously. Do you know there are some folk who go to church and, and the Bible is not their textbook? I was preaching over in South America. I've been blessed by God to carry the gospel to different parts of the world. And it's my joy when I get done here, I take five days rest and I'm off to the colder side of Canada. As a matter of fact, if you're watching tonight, I know they may be on. I know Pastor Ishmael Ali is on. Uh, uh, the old man is saying, giving a shout out to the Alberta conference. We come. They could be having the meeting, not under a tent, but in a hotel ballroom uh, someplace in Calgary. Uh, in, in, in the Alberta conference and um, it, it's been my happy privilege to carry the gospel to carry to be God's messenger boy uh, and, and I was over in South America some years ago and you know it's my joy to give Bibles and I'll do that out here as well and so I'd like to go visit after preaching the joy in, in ministry is to go and sit down uh, by the rum bar sit I didn't say I was drinking rum, you know. Now sit down in the home. Sit down in, uh, by the uh, governor's place and, uh, and, and, and reason. And so I was out visiting and um, I came to a home where the lady was by the meetings. And uh, when we, the car pulled up, she was sitting on her veranda and I walked up. And I noticed she was crying. And I said, Lord, maybe it's a bad time to come. So I asked her, are you okay? Yes, pastor. Is your husband Okay. Yes, Pastor. All the family okay? Yes, Pastor. So, so tell me, I, I notice you're crying. She said, Pastor, I came to your tent last night and you gave me this Bible. I've been going to church for over 40 years and it's the first time I'm reading the Bible for myself. And it brought tears to her eyes. So I said, what do you do at church? She said, they don't read the Bible like you do, Pastor. They may quote a text from the Psalms and we have the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed, and, but we don't read the Bible as you do. And, and I'm so glad that I came last night because here am I, I've been sitting here for the past two hours and I can't stop reading. The Bible says for those of us who, 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 who take delight in the word of God, that we have a more sure word of prophecy. That we don't have to guess where we are along the journey in looking at the future. God has already stepped down in your future and he's now fixing your present that if you and I have sense enough to put our hands in the hands of the man who steal the waters, to put our hands in the hands of the man who, who touched the lever and made him whole, if we have sense enough to put our hands in the hands of God, then we have a sure future. Are you listening to me? In the courtroom, there's a phrase that I want to borrow from the legal circle and use it as our theme tonight. The phrase is simply this, beyond reasonable doubt. In a jury trial, the evidence is presented 
The judge at the end of the case will do the summary and give the jury their instruction. And especially in a murder trial, the judge would ask that they try to make sure there's consensus in the verdict. Or at least that the evidence is weighed and the conclusion is beyond reasonable doubt. Tonight I've come to tell you that I am settled in my mind that the Bible is the word of the living God. Tonight I'm come to share with you whether you are atheists, agnostics, or infidels that you can look in history and find support for the word of the living God. And so I have chosen one of those prophetic outlines where God would outline the future of the world for thousands of years before the stuff happened. The prophet Isaiah said, there is no God like him declaring the end from the beginning. Are you listening to me? Before you think the thought, God knows it. Before you have a problem, he has a solution. As a matter of fact, before your mind begins to worry, he's created peace in your valley. Are you listening to me? One of my favorite texts is from Isaiah chapter 43. He said, thus said the Lord God that formed you, when you pass through the water, it shall never overflow you. When you pass through the fire, it shall never destroy you. I wonder who would want to live without a God like that. To live without God is to live recklessly and dangerously. In this rotten world where you don't have to trouble anybody, they'll just be driving and bam, 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 you dead. Are you listening to me? I was preaching in Canada some years ago in Toronto. Ah, thousands were, they were having the pride march. They were having wild parties. And there were some young folk who came by the tent and said, Sir, last night, we came here. We were asking our friends to come. They were just up the road from the tent. And tonight, sir, we've lost some of our friends. I said, what happened? The young man said they were at the party. And a drive-by shooting. This is in a first world country. A drive-by shooting with high-powered weapons. Young people are dead. Young people sometimes feel that, that they're too young to, uh, you know, mm, this might break my mother's heart, but uh, my time is running. Let me say it anyhow. I've been preaching from I was 14 years of age. My brother, my father's first child, my mother's first child came by in one of my early campaigns, 1970-something. And he got up and run home. When I got home, I said, why did you leave? And he said, if I'd stayed, I'd give my heart to Jesus. But I'm not quite ready yet. I know the pain of trying my best to bring God to my own brother. Listen to me carefully. He stopped drinking. He stopped smoking. But God is not satisfied to being Lord of a part of your life if he is not Lord of all of your life. And church folk need to understand, if we're going to go to church, we're going to make sure that our all is on the altar of sacrifice. And folk who don't go to church ought to understand, you can look at some church folk and imagine what God is like. You've got to know God for yourself. You've got to examine the evidence and be on reasonable doubt. You can draw the conclusion that the Bible is the word of the living God. My brother died. I was on my way from Boston, USA. Went on a preaching assignment for the weekend. They called that he was in the Black River Hospital, transferred to Mandeville, Got off the plane in Montego Bay, jumped in the car and chased down the road to Mandeville. 
You may have heard me share that story over and over, but young people, I've got to help you understand that sometimes you don't understand the burden on the heart of your older siblings or your parents when you have not surrendered your heart to Jesus. Got to the hospital. The nurse said, the doctor want to see you? I said, but I want to see my brother, then I'll talk with the doctor. He said, no, sir, doc want to see you first. And I want to cut the story short. I met an honest doctor who walked me through the challenges that his organs were shutting down. And the doctor said, I don't know if he will talk. Because he hasn't been talking. But I suspect he may be able to hear. He said, sir, I want to say to you up front, he was in such bad shape, I had to double the medication. And it sent him in reverse. And he looked me in my eye. Doctors are practicing physicians. They are not perfect. And sometimes with their best. And I wanted to know that they sometimes go beyond the call of duty. I buried a young doctor years ago when my little girl, who is now a doctor herself, when, when my little girl was, was, well, she was a little girl then. Well, let me say, it, she's still a little girl for me. But, but she referred to him as the baby doctor. He was doing lecture at the tent for me uh, in John's Hall. He worked in Montego Bay and Lucy Hospital. He lives in Mobay, worked at the Lucy Hospital. And one night, having worked hours, now I, I say to the ministry, there ought to be a better way. My daughter will go to work sometimes on Friday and she comes home on Sunday. Non-stop. And he worked all day Thursday and, and, and all night Thursday night and all day Friday. And he's on his way home and saw an accident along the road between Lucy and Montego Bay. And he stopped to help. Went back to Lucy with the patient. Did his best. And on his way back to Montego Bay, he crashed and died. And if you think that's bad, it was one month before his wedding day. Listen to me, young people. The devil is no friend of yours. He'll promise you life and give you death. In the prime of life, he'll cut you down. My brother had the opportunity. And so over his bedside, I, 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 the doctor said to me, are you a pastor? I said, what do you ask? He said, because all night your brother kept saying he want to be baptized. Until he could no longer speak. And I buried my brother. I stood over his grave saying dust to dust and ashes to ashes. And my heart ached in anguish unspeakable. But you know, I can preach to you. I can pray for you. I can agonize with God over you. I can agonize with you for God. But I can't choose God for you. It's a decision you have to make. And you're sitting here tonight and you don't know what the devil in hell is planning for you. That's why you've got to make your calling an election sure. Lord, my time is gone. I may have to cut the subject in two. But tonight, I want to take you to one of those prophecies that outline the future of the world in unmistakable clarity. God chose to give the dream to a heathen king who later became a converted man. Let me say it again. God chose to give a dream. He stepped over priests and Levites. He stepped over presidents and pastors and elders and, and church officers and he got down to hellhole Babylon. Picked out a heathen king. Opened up to his mind the future of the world. The king who thought that he was large and in charge. God saw something in him that had a question, a yearning. And God gave him a future outline of the world. But the minute God emailed the dream to him, God hit the delete button. So when he woke up, he checked his email. No dream. His mind couldn't bring it back. No dream. He knew it was important. He knew it was significant. So significant that he calls in all his wise men. There are some things that belong to God that your friend or your pastor can't explain to you. 
Are you listening to me? The things of God can only be understood and interpreted by the people of God. And you've got to be in touch with God. The Bible said, surely, Amos 3 and verse 7, the Lord God will do nothing. But he reveals his secrets to his servants. And so God picked out Nebuchadnezzar. And he called in his wise men. He called in his astrologers. He called in those who were paid by his own money. He said, I had a dream last night. Can I go to Daniel 2 and verse 1? Listen fast, I'm running fast. I got 20 minutes to get it done. Now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. He had what? Dream. And the Bible said it troubled him. So I'm jumping to verse 4. I, 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 I'll get it to you on the screen. We, we'll get there as of Tuesday, I hope. And if these guys don't get it there, you can start to sing Rock of Ages clip for me. I'm not threatening anybody, Keith. I'm just promising something. As a matter of fact, we have enough plyboards left here. And caskets aren't difficult to make, Myri. And you're pointing at Keith. Your casket won't take as much material as Keith. <laughs> the Bible said in Daniel 2 and verse 4, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we'll give you the interpretation. There's a Nebuchadnezzar, what you're asking, there is not a man on earth that can do that. They said, only the gods whose dwelling is not with man. I'm happy they recognize there's a power beyond their wisdom. There's a power beyond their learning. There's a power that's far above every earthly power. They said, king, what you're asking for, there's nobody down here who can interpret it except the gods whose dwelling is not with man. Are you listening to me? They said, tell us the dream. Tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can give its interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar was no fool. He said, listen, the only way I'm going to trust your interpretation if you can tell me what I dreamt. You tell me my dream, and if you're good like that, I'll trust your interpretation. And they, they couldn't handle it. They said in the next verse, there is no man on earth who can do what you ask. Then the king heard. There's a man who was not present. His name is Daniel. I thank God that in every vile generation, God always has a man. Can I talk with you? I said in every vile generation, God always has a man. And you and I ought to make sure we are God's people in this vile generation. You ask the preacher, how do I get to be God's man or God's woman? Order your steps in harmony with the word of God. Are you listening to me? Ask the Savior to guide you. You're struggling with temptations. The psalm says, ask the Savior to help you. He'll strengthen and guide you. He'll carry you through. Don't let the devil lie to you that you can live right. Oh yes, you can. There's power in the blood. There's power in the name of Jesus. I know it's fashionable because the world is filled with half-hearted yellow liver Christians. But in times like these, you ought to weigh 16 ounces to the pound. Solid through and through to be a child of God. So they brought in Daniel. I'm running fast, so listen fast. They brought in Daniel. And Daniel, listen to the king. He said, king... I can't tell you the dream, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. Listen, you ought to know that your God can fix it. Are you listening to me? I said the three, Daniel knew that God was a deliverer. So when they threw him later, I, well, my time is running. There's so much I want to tell you. Let me run on. So, so, Daniel said to his friends, let's pray. I thank God for praying, Christians. You can't be a child of God and not know that your God is still in the prayer hearing business. I said, you've got to know that you know that you know that he answers prayer, that he still hears, that he cares 
that if God chooses not to answer the way you prayed, he's got something better in store for you. Are you listening to me? You and I have got to get to the place where like the three Hebrew boys, we can say, even if God chooses not to deliver, we know he can, but we will not let him down. Are you listening to me? So, so Daniel said, King, give us some time. Daniel called his friend. You ought to have praying friends. Amen. Young people, if all your friends are only interested in your looks, if all that they're interested in is your sex appeal, if you don't have friends who can help you climb higher with God, drop those friends. Are you listening to me? I said drop those friends. You and I are too close to the coming of the Lord to gamble. Because sometimes, sometimes we lose our steadfast connection with God because we have the wrong friends. We have the wrong companions. We're in the wrong group. So Daniel said to his friends, listen, guys, let's go on our knees. Let's lock ourselves in because we know who our God is. If God send a dream like that, let's talk to him. So here comes Daniel back to the king. Verse 31. You, O king, were watching and behold a great image. This great image whose splendor was excellent stood before you. And its form was awesome. Can you see Nebuchadnezzar bowing his head? That's it. That's it. That's what I saw. Can you see him in rapt attention as Daniel uh, walked him down through exactly... This God is so awesome that he sent a dream to one man. Hit the delete button and then email the dream to another. Are you listening to me? Not only did he email the dream to Daniel, but he emailed Daniel the full outline. He gave Daniel the interpretation and Daniel popped his eyes open. What an awesome God we serve. And he comes in and said, this is the dream. You saw a head of gold. You saw a breast and arms of silver. You saw a belly and thigh of brass. You saw legs of iron. You saw feet of iron. You saw toes of iron and clay. I'm rushing tonight. I shouldn't rush, but my time is going. He gave him the outline and the king kept nodding. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's exactly what I saw. Verse 36, Daniel said, this is the dream now brace yourself for the interpretation. Listen, when you're connected with God, you aren't afraid of telling the king what God says. You've got to speak truth to power. Are you listening to me? You've got to be able to speak truth to power. So he said to him, King, you saw the head of gold. Thou art this head of gold. He said, the God of heaven has given you a kingdom. The length and breadth of modern power is in your hands. Because God has given you this great authority. But here comes the next statement. But after thee. So hold on here now. Daniel was talking to his king. Nebuchadnezzar reigned from 605 Babylon, 605 to 539 BC. And sometimes we think that we are here to stay. We think we are bull, buck, and duppy conqueror. Huh? So Daniel said to him in verse 38, Daniel 2, 37, 38, You, O king, or a king of kings, you are this head of gold. You are this head of gold. Babylon! was built to the pinnacle of his power under Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, this young, vibrant, fearsome. Remember, it was he who marched 15,000 captives from Jerusalem. Listen to me, church members. If you and I don't serve God faithfully, he'll allow us to lose our freedom. He'll allow us to lose our blessing. We hold life and property in connection with our willingness to trust and obey. Wish I had time to tell you what happened to Jerusalem, but let me run on. History records 
what they call the wonders of the ancient world. And among the wonders of the ancient world is the hanging gardens of ancient Babylon. So impressive, so amazing uh, was, was Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon that the world had to take note of it. But here comes verse 39. But regardless of your power, but in spite of your mastery in construction, in spite of your architectural ingenuity, in spite of the dominion of your power, in spite of the strength of your army, in spite of your masculine prowess and your vigor, vim and vitality, but after you shall arise another. By the way, could I see the hands of all the wives here? You're sitting beside your husband. Not these two right here. I know your husband not here. But can I see the hands of all the wives? You're here and you're sitting beside your husband. Masks will escape. His wife went outside. Can I see your hands? You're sitting beside your husband. Can you turn to your husband and say, There, after you, I don't want to match up your marriage. I'm just being a practical person. Because if he doesn't take care of himself and he doesn't live long, then after him, now he's looking straight at me. Sir, if I were you, I'd enjoy all the honey I can. Because after you may arise another. Now don't get high blood pressure. Don't. So, so he said to him, after you, shall arise another. In other words, Nebuchadnezzar, you're powerful, but God is all powerful. Nebuchadnezzar, you're here for a time, but God is for all eternity. He said, listen, the head of gold will fade away. Now, the amazing thing about, about the prophecy, so you can know it's the hand of God at work. Every one of those kingdoms were overthrown by a weaker kingdom. Every one of them was overthrown by an inferior kingdom so you can know atheists, so you can know agnostics and hear me carefully, it was not written <laughs> God gave the dream while Nebuchadnezzar was still king of all the whole world and he told him about Nebuchadnezzar, media person, Greece and Rome and the kingdoms of Europe while Nebuchadnezzar was still alive. After thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours. And I want to help you understand so awesome was God that in Isaiah chapter 45, God named the next king 150 years before that king was born. Before there was ever a media Persian kingdom. God called Cyrus by name. And you don't have to take the Bible. There are archaeological findings. There is a cylinder with the name of Cyrus. You can date. Listen to me. Beyond reasonable doubt. We have the facts of history. Authenticating the word of the Bible. Are you listening to me? You don't have to take that's here. Dig up the facts for yourself. Hear me atheists. Hear me agnostics. Do your research. Do your own looking at archaeological findings and you shall discover that the kingdoms are in line just as God said they would be thousands of years before they came on the scene of action. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Beyond reasonable doubt, we have the evidence. Isaiah 41, 45, verse 1, Thus said the Lord to, to his anointed Cyrus, to Cyrus whose right hand I have held to subdue kingdoms before him, to loose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. God was here telling Nebuchadnezzar how his kingdom would fall. God was here describing 
how the successor of Babylon would come in because Babylon in its pride, Belshazzar was co-regent with his father, Nabonidus. Nebuchadnezzar uh, died and the kingdom was now in the hand of Nabonidus. He was out plundering and expanding the kingdom and he left his grandson, Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, the son of Nabopolassar, was left in charge and he got so big for his boots, he ordered to bring God's holy vessel. That's a sermon by itself. Not even the gate. They felt that their country was invincible. But hear me, God will cut you down in your pride. I have a word for church people. Sometimes we think that the ones we pass outside will not make it inside the pearly gates. Cyrus was a heathen when God called. Listen, he was not even born yet. When God prophesied and God said, my servant Cyrus, there's somebody here, you're not yet baptized, you're not yet converted, you're not yet surrendered, but God has already claimed you as his own. You've got a seat in glory. There's a white robe in my father's kingdom for you. God has already stepped down in your future, opened a door for you, and has come back in your present, hoping that you will have sense enough to say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. And if you have sense enough, tonight you may be in the rumba. Tonight you may be a prostitute, a harlot, a no good, but there's power, wonder working power in the blood. He called Cyrus by name. State his claim over the life of Cyrus while the devil felt that Cyrus was his. God says he's my servant. I don't know if the word of God does to you what it's doing to my own heart. That God looked at us in our mess, in our sins, in our wretchedness and said tonight you may not look like it but you're mine. He said tonight the devil may claim you but your mind, he looks at you. Maybe you feel so worthless. You feel so undone. Maybe you are ashamed of the past, perplexed by the present, apprehensive of the future. Maybe you feel you've gone so far. You've been so broken. You've been so embarrassed. But I've got news for you. Him that cometh to me, John 6 and verse 37, God says he will in no wise cast out. First John 1 verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful, he is just, he'll forgive, he'll cleanse from all unrighteousness. There was a man on the cross, a wretched thief, a no good thief, condemned beyond reasonable doubt. The evidence was clear, he was guilty, he himself said it. But on the cross, he was dying. And bless God, he recognized there was a savior in his midst. And while his reveling companion was cursing God and cursing Jesus and say, save yourself on us. The thief on the right said, man, shut up. Shut up. I've been here on the cross now. From the sixth to the ninth hour and I've heard enough about the man in the middle I've seen enough in three hours shut your mouth there's nothing you can say that's going to change my mind about the man on the cross in the middle because I see the evidence 
beyond a reasonable doubt that he's a savior. He's the Lord. He's redeemer. He's God. And so the thief stretched his neck over and said, Lord. And now hang on there. Hang on there. It's not just that there's a Greek word, curious. But in the text, in the pericope, in the context in which it is used, he's saying, listen, today I surrender. No longer will I be the boss of my life. From this moment, Lord, you're my boss. From this moment, I put what I have left in your hands. From this moment. And because of the fullness of the surrender. He knew he will not get down from the cross alive. He knew he can't go back and fix the past. He knew he can't change what other people think about him. He knew he can't be bothered now about the opinions of others. He knows now the only thing that's important is what God thinks about him. He knows now he has a golden opportunity and what's important is what he does now. Yesterday is past and gone and tomorrow that opportunity may never come. But in this moment, this is all I have. Whitney Houston sang, give me one moment in time as I raise with destiny. The thief on the cross recognize in his midst there's a savior. He recognize he's dying. But this does not have to be the end of his story. He recognize he can't go back and fix his yesterday. But he recognize there's a man beside him who can take care of the past the present and the future he's got justifying power he's got sanctifying power he's got glorification power and the thief said today I surrender now there's something I'm done I'll finish it on Tuesday night but the thief said I heard them cry, crucify him. The thief said, I heard them shout, come down from the cross and we'll believe. The thief said, you don't have to come down for me to believe. Because the evidence is beyond reasonable doubt. You don't have to come down for me to believe. I'm already convinced. I'm already sold out. So let them talk. Let them talk until their blood pressure reaches the skies. But while they're talking, I'm going to be surrendering. While they're talking, I'm making my jewels up. Lord, remember me. They're crying out away with you. But I know this is not how your story ends. I know the kingdom belongs to you. I know there's power in your hand. The thief on the cross in his statement was making more than just a one line statement. When he said remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. The thief was saying this world will not last forever. The thief was saying I'm just a sinner. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. The thief was saying in your hands are the keys of hell and of death. The thief was saying today you're on a cross but I know I know this is not how your story go end. And so the thief said, I'm sold out. I'm surrendered. The evidence is beyond reasonable doubt. You're going to come in your kingdom. You're going to come again. And when you come back, there'll be no more stealing. There'll be no more thieves. Remember me when you come in your kingdom and bless the Lord God. The Savior who was fastened with three rusty nails. The Savior who 
sometimes he's got to transfer the weight from the nails in his hands transfer the weight to the nails in his feet but he stopped dying I said Jesus Paul is dying and in the midst of his pain he sees a longing heart and he said to the thief on the cross today today you don't have to know that 2300 days prophecy today I say to you you don't have to be able to recite anything because I've got power to redeem to redeem, to redeem, to redeem all of Adam's fallen race. Today, I say to you, when I come in my kingdom, you, God, I wish I had time. He said, you may be with me. No. There was no subjunctive in his response. He said, you shall be with me. You shall be with me. You shall be with me. Listen to me. I'll finish on Tuesday. I don't know who you are, but the devil is a liar. I don't know what state you came here in. I don't know what burdens you came here with. I don't know what heavy load you came here under. But I serve a sin removing Jesus. I serve a burden bearing Jesus. I serve a heavy weight lifting Jesus. I serve a Jesus who said I'm come to seek and to save that which is lost. I serve a Jesus who said in John 6 and verse 37, him that cometh to me, a liar, a rapist, a murderer, a prostitute, a drunk, him that cometh to me, I will. You know why it's cast out. I'm done. I said I'm done. But if I didn't know Jesus, I'd have to get to know him tonight. If I'd come here with any doubt about the word, the evidence is clear. Not only is it that he knows the future, but he's a forgiving Jesus. I don't know what they're going to sing, but all I know, if on my way driving to Montego Bay tonight, my eyes should close. Don't worry. Beyond reasonable doubt, my life is in the hands of the living God. And I want to see you in my Father's kingdom. I want to see you and you in my Father's kingdom. Cyrus was not in church when God called him my servant. Because God looked down in Cyrus's future and he saw what grace would make of Cyrus. He's looking down in your future and he is seeing what grace can make of you. I said he's looking down in your future and he wants you in the kingdom. I said he wants you in the kingdom. And they have started moving even before I say come. But they have set the example that God is calling them. And God is calling you too. He's calling you too. I'm going to ask you to stand. And if tonight you want the assurance that your life is in the hands of God. I'd like to pray with you and for you. Would you come? while they sing would you come while they sing from the front and the back and the middle would you come the assurance the assurance that your life is in the hands of God you may be in church or out of church on the second night you sing you sing Savior I've got some struggles 
that only you can handle. I've got some problems that only you can fix. I've got some burdens that only you can carry. Wherever you are tonight, on the outside, on the inside, I'm going to ask my pastors to come and greet you. Shake your hands because every shake hand is saying to you, you can make it your God's own, your God's own. I'm going to ask my pastors tonight to join Pastor Allen down front and greet you in the name of Jesus. Let me out the throne of mercy. Find a sweet relief. Tonight, he's a sin pardoning Savior. He's a burden bearing Savior. He's a soul cleansing Savior. I'm done. I'm done. My time is up. But you want to come. You want to come and make your calling an election show. Sing the song. You want to come tonight. You want to come tonight as they shake hands with you. As they shake hands with you. Whether you're in church or out of church. There's an invitation to the mercy seat. Come on tonight. Come on to Jesus. Come on and, 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 and reacquaint yourself with this Savior. Oh, would you sing it? Would you sing it? Would you sing it? My time is up. I've got to pray. I've got to pray. If you're coming, hurry and come. Hurry and come. Trusting only in thy merit. Would I see? Would I see your face? Heal, 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 heal my wounded, broken spirit. It's grace that saves. It's grace that pardons. It's grace that empowers. It's grace that redeems. It's grace that restores. It's grace that upholds you with the right hand. Of his righteousness, come on tonight. Shame the devil, because God has a claim on your life. And while on others thou art born, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. And as the single last time, if there's somebody else up in here, you've been struggling with some pain. You've been struggling with the burden. Come on. If God could call Cyrus by his name a hundred and fifty years before Cyrus was born, surely, surely, he knows your name. He knows your need. He knows your issues. Would you join that no card there? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, sister, no card, please. Listen to I don't know what your challenge is but God knows your name and he asked me to tell you beyond a shadow of doubt there's no one like him who knows the future there's no one like him who knows the end from the beginning do not pass me Our heads are bowed. Please follow my instructions. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. When I want you to give a card, dear, I'll tell you when to do it. Let us pray. Oh Lord our God, in the name of Jesus, we come tonight. Many of us are worried about our health, worried about a job, 
worried about the health of our parents, the health of our children, the health of our relatives. Many have come tonight perplexed and ashamed of the past, afraid of the future. We come tonight like the thief on the cross to the only God who knows the future. And from the depths of our hearts, we say, Lord, remember me. In the name of Jesus, I lift up to you all of these, your children, who from the depths of their hearts, they're saying, Savior, oh, blessed Savior, hear my humble cry. In the name of Jesus, they are burdened people tonight who can't even put in words the burden they carry. In, in the name of Jesus, our sympathizing Savior, I present to you all of these. They're yours. You've created them. They are yours. You died to save them. They are yours. You're coming back to get them. And there's no devil who can pluck them out of your hands if they put their lives in the hands of the one who still the waters. Take us home safely. Give us a good day tomorrow, a good night's rest. Bring us back on Tuesday evening at 6.30. Have some quiet moments in your presence before we start the evening service. God, we pray that you'll help us to bring out our relatives, our sons, our daughters, our parents, our work associates, our neighbors, because time is running out. Watch over us and fulfill your desire for each of us, we pray in Jesus' name and let God's children say, now we, we, we've gone a little late tonight and I must apologize to you. I really want to close before nine each evening, but hurry up and get home safely. Love you in the name of Jesus. And uh, we want to wish you well. Let me ask all our Bible counselors, all our Bible counselors, all our Bible counselors, could you meet me right now on the stage all our bible counselors all our bible counselors would you meet me right now come right up right now on the platform all of our bible counselors are you hearing me all our bible counselors would you meet me on the platform right now good night everyone may the grace of god be with you may the love of god protect you may the will of god direct you May his mercy surround you and know that he knows your future. Know that he's a loving savior. And as you go tonight, remember there'll be no meeting tomorrow night. There'll be no meeting tomorrow night. We'll be back on Tuesday at 6.30. I wanted to, to tell your neighbor that something good is happening out here. Bring your neighbors, bring your work associates, bring your classmates, bring the neighborhood and come let's worship God together in the beauty of holiness. Good night everyone. Be safe on your way home. May the goodness of God be with you. As the music plays, go on home tonight with the goodness of God in your heart with the fact that he will hear your humble cry we will see you tomorrow not tomorrow rather on Tuesday evening at 6.30